I grew up in uh, Baltimore and uh, have a unique path. Uh, originally coming out of high school, I went to Baltimore Polytechnic Institute, and my mom was uh, talking about the Naval Academy, so she struck my interest in it, and I uh, haven't looked back since. So, growing up uh, in Baltimore uh, as a Catholic, went to Catholic schools all the way up prior to Poly. I was very uh, disciplined, had a disciplined household, and I think. Uh, being a Marine or wanting to be a Marine at that time, it aligned very well. I think uh, my time at the Naval Academy, uh, as they produce midshipmen morally, mentally, and physically, uh, it aligned with my uh, disposition and uh, it helped prepare me to be a lieutenant. And if you ask someone to define what leadership is, you'll get a thousand different answers. Uh, but part of it is the individual and what they're capable of, what they believe they're capable of and trying to find the best inside of someone and helping them uh, get to that point and how you do that uh, can be defined in a way as leadership. While being an instructor on the staff at the uh, Austin Canada School, it gave me an opportunity to help shape uh, the, the future officers that come into the Marine Corps. Uh, I personally enjoyed it because I was in charge of the leadership reaction course. That experience, you. Uh, You'll give some candidates a 55-gallon drum, a uh, two-by-four, and some rope. And I, I enjoyed watching, you know, the youth of our nation come together and, and, and take our challenges differently and, and come up with solutions. Oftentimes, we uh, look at the senior leaders, the generals, colonels, and sergeants, majors, maybe as the leaders. Uh, but I believe that we get our inspiration from the juniors. And when you look in their eyes and see the motivation and their aspirations and you try to help them get to where they want to be, I think that motivates us to make sure that we're doing what we say we do and living up to the espoused values of our institution. And so my leadership has, has grown over the years just from uh, learning, being around the Colonel Ripley's and then Major Allen's and having them invest in you over the years and you learn. And one of our principals in the Marine Corps know yourself and always seek self-improvement. So uh, personally, I haven't changed, but I think my leadership has matured as I have matured. The Flying Tigers, great, great organization, great squadron. Uh, when they transitioned from the CH-46 to the V-22, it was a revolutionary transition. Uh, the capabilities of the V-22 Osprey is threefold over what they had. I was actually the MAG commander, so the uh, Flying Tigers were one of the squadrons that were under me. I did fly with them to the Philippines. I was flying as part of that crew out to do that mission. So I was the uh, commanding officer of uh, the Ugly Angels in 2007, and we did go to Iraq and support uh, the missions in uh, MNF West. For the uh, aircraft that we were flying, this is the CH-53D, and you have the CH-53E, which is the newer ones. The 53Ds are late 60s models, we call them uh, 69 Sikorskis, but they performed wonderfully out in combat and we were able to support the Marines on the ground uh, the entire time out there. HMX-1 is special. Just being a part of that squadron, not everybody gets to go there. Uh, I flew in support in uh, early 2000s. It does operational testing evaluation, it you know, supports the Marines over at the basic school and Officers Canada School. Uh, but the presidential support mission is probably the most recognized mission as you see, when the president gets off of the helicopter all over the world, you know, HMX-1 is there to support. So as the military assistant to the Secretary of the Navy, I was uh, supporting him in uh, advising him on basically the Marine Corps matters and to help with uh, uh, his travel and support abroad in uh, the different countries that we have uh, either treaties or other partnerships with. While I'm in Hawaii, once the Senate confirmation uh, comes, uh, I'll be assigned as a deputy Marfor Pack, deputy CG for Marfor Pack. I will uh, represent the CG at certain things that he's unable to represent, and then I'll travel around the countries and uh, help, you know, like countries like Philippines, Korea, Japan. I have relationships with some of their leaderships already, so I'll be able to hopefully leverage that and continue to help build our U.S. relationships in those countries in that region. Most important lesson I've learned is to be yourself. Don't, don't change 
because your rank changes, don't change because you want some more rank or anything. And uh, also to treat people the way you want to be treated. So it's kind of the golden rule still applies, regardless of whether you're in uniform or out of uniform. Been married for 22 years. My lovely wife, Sherry, basically pulled her out of Southern California and drug her around the world. <laughs> it's not easy being a military spouse and to have military children, but um, I feel like I do this for them and hopefully that they're uh, proud of what I do. Coming out of Baltimore, you don't dream of this. Uh, there's a lot of other distractions and your aspirations. Probably the bar's not set as high as it could be. And being this close to Annapolis and having this opportunity, becoming a pilot, commanding a squadron in combat, and serving in the West Pacific, uh, those are things that I would never dream of. And I would hope that uh, my experiences could reach the, the next generation or the one behind that and hopefully motivate them to you know, dream a little bit bigger than, than I did. <laughs>